Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel and welcome to Microsoft ERP Beginners Tutorial episode number 11. In the previous episode, we did cover about how to create a product attributes and how to create a procurement category. And in this episode, we will be uh, covering about how to uh, create a product and how to release the product into the released item. So with that note, let's get started. So let's get started with the creation of the product. So in order to create a product, you need to get into the uh, product information management and all products product master or against the product section. So this section will have um, the list of both products and product master and this section will only have the list of products and this section will have the list of product masters. So all these three are the same form just that the forms will have different filters in it. So based on the filter the forms will display uh, the items required. So um, so what is the difference between the product, pro product, product master and uh, the release product. So let's get into the products and product master. So in the products and product master, you see that there are so many data that, that are already available and we know that it's a new legal entity and we did not create all this data. So these data are coming in here because this form is a global, that is it is shared form. So whatever I'm going to create here or any product that I'm going to create here will be available or will be visible from any legal entity. And that's how we are able to see all the data which created from a different legal entity or some of the Microsoft demo data. So these are all the products that are residing only in the products and product master section and this products is not yet released or they cannot be used within any transactions within this legal entity. So in order for a product to be used within a transactions in a legal entity that needs to be within the released product. So the released products is a table which displays the list of items that are available lists of products or item or both are same. Sometimes I call it as an item because here it says item name normally in the system. So the item or spare part or a product all means the same. So since this as, as you can see this is blank because we have not released any of the product into the released product section. So, um, so what is the difference between the all product product master and the release product? So to give you a real time scenario, the all product product master, you can just imagine it to be a catalog or a product catalog. Um, a company can have uh, 1 million items in a product catalog or 10,000 items in a product catalog, but necessarily the company will not use all the product in the catalog within their transactions. Even though they have 1 million item and it's a group of company and company A might use 100 items from the catalog or company B might use 1000 items from the catalog or company C might use 500 items from the catalog based on their requirement. But the catalog displays the whole list of 1 million item that are the parts of, that are supplied or manufactured by different suppliers. But necessarily we don't need to release everything in the products or product master into the release product. We will only release them whenever required or whichever product is required. So that is the difference between a product and the product uh, and the release product. So the product is like a catalog and the release product is like the one which we want to use within our company. So this can be a good example and uh, easy for you to remember the concept or difference between the product and the product master. Sorry, product and the release product. So, um, so for this session, we are going to create a product. So let's get started with creating a product and then finally let's release it into a legal entity so that we will at least have one item to start with our supply chain management transactions. So, so far in our journey, we did do the setups uh, required for us to start with the course and now we are setting up the product information module so that we can start with the course and we still actually did not start with any transactions or actual purchase or sales process yet. Okay, So we are still in the middle of doing setups and configurations in order for us to proceed with a supply chain course. So, um, so first let me uh, try to create a product. So click on the new button and uh, uh, in the product there are uh, different product types like uh, 
item and service an item is a tangible product and service is a non tangible product it could be a subcontractor service or it could be a uh, a support service or a training service we are offering to a different company in such cases your product will become a service type or else the product will be an item type in this case i'm going to create a a spare part so let it be it's going to be a tangible uh, item so i'm going to keep it as a item but more on the product type we will discuss in detail later um the product subtype again so it, it has a two type, subtype one is a product another is a product master the product master we will see in the in the future episode uh, the product is what we are going to do it now okay so uh, let me name the product as uh, maybe alloy wheels 14 inches original sorry original product okay that's going to be my product name and uh, yeah that's it so let me now go ahead and say, okay so that's your uh, product it's very easy to create a product but creating a release product could be a little more complex because it has more fields but product is very very easy because they only have a very limited number of generic fields because a product is a global uh, entity and it's displayed from everywhere so they don't want to make it very complicated so just with few few like couple of fields as a mandatory field we are able to just create a product so we are done with the product creation uh, so uh, the color group, style, size group, the product variant nomenclature and product variant nomenclature etc are all related with the product master so during the product master demo we will uh, we will see what they are for, for now they are not required because this is not a product master this is a product and uh, some of the mandatory things required are dimension group so the product dimension is disabled because it's only available for the product master and not for the product and the storage dimension we already discussed in elaborate way in a, in one of our previous episode i think in the episode number 7 if you missed it please do go and watch the episode number 7 um, so let's now assign a storage dimension so in this item i'm going to store this item uh, and i'm going to track only the storage dimension as site and warehouse i do not i'm I, i'm not interested in tracking the location level so i'm going to use this particular storage dimension which involves just a uh, site and warehouse likewise i do not want to track the serial number or a batch number for this product because this is my first product i want to keep the scenario very simple so i'm going to choose non so which that 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 means that i'm not tracking either a tracking dimension like owner or um like a serial number or batch number okay so just go say okay so your um one of your mandatory setup is done which is your uh, storage dimension group sorry dimension group uh, so um, then there are few other setup uh, which we already discussed in the previous episodes like um, the product attributes was discussed in just in the episode before this and again the product category was also uh, well discussed but however we will again uh, refresh your memory and, and uh, try to fill them uh, in this so at the moment you will not see any product attributes because the product attributes are linked with the product category and we did not link any product category yet to this particular item so when you go ahead and link a product category then you will see your product attributes populated so uh, this was the product category we created in the previous episode and this will come under spare part and wheels and say okay Okay. I believe I've already defined uh, product attributes against the category wheels so I assume that you should be having a uh, product attributes populated now yes you have so is it a hazardous item no uh, what is the make uh, so I'm going to keep it as a Mercedes-Benz brand uh, do we have any service contract no it's not applicable and does it have a warranty yes maybe from the 1st of august to the uh, 1st of august uh, 2022 one year warranty so these are some of the attributes that i'm going to fill in 
so we have uh, both all the three items now and the related products we already um, re um, covered the related products in episode number six uh, we do created a related product group called alternative so uh, why do we need it so just in case if your alloy wheels are 14 inch this is the original product is not available in stock but the customer definitely need a 14 inch alloy wheel then we can talk to the customer and say if the customer is interested in a uh, a non-genuine brand that is a local brand of mercedes-benz but it still fits your car well so if the customer agrees then we can just check for an alternative product against the related product section so we can define an alternative product here uh, so let me just uh, define a product uh, in this list or let me first uh, make it as an alternative product and define it as P0001 I'm not sure whether it will uh, no I think it's 4 Uh, not sure what is the number of that product um, okay let's for example let's just assign it to uh, 5 for time being or 4 assuming that this is an alternative product for my wheel so that's the alternative product uh, sorry uh, the related product you can refer to the episode 6 for more details on that um, the unit conversion again it's a bit important setup so this all the standard unit conversion are applicable for all the products are um, are defined by Microsoft against the standard conversion as you can see uh, millimeter to meter um, so a kg to um, liters and there's so many unit conversions those are all available which are standard unit conversions applicable globally for all the products but in general the unit conversion can be highly specific to your product it could be for example uh, your product is too big that um, one box can only fit two of your product so in such cases you cannot define them in a global level because it differs from the product to product based on the dimension let's say the wheel is a bit smaller so a 14 inch alloy wheel one box might contain five 14 inch alloy wheels but let's say 16 inch alloy wheels one box could only fit two alloy wheels so it depends so i cannot declare those uh, uh, conversions here in the global level so they, they they are meant to be declared in the interclass conversion level okay so uh, you need to just go and uh, click new and say that one box okay one box is equal to uh, five pieces or five inches so every box will contain five uh, inches of the tire so that's my conversion for this uh, this 14 inch alloy wheel so likewise you can give you different uh, kinds of conversion so if i give this conversion and if i go and set up my default purchase unit as a box then in my purchase order you will see the unit as one that is in the boxes so i receive quantity one box but when I receive it into the inventory, if my inventory quantity, a default inventory unit is each s, then the system will automatically do the conversion and put the one box and convert it into five each s and my inventory on hand will be five. But in my purchase order, you will see the quantity as one because it's a box, right? So those in unit conversions will automatically happen if you set up here against the intra class conversion, which is specific to a product. So that's very important setup uh, if you are having an advanced warehouse management and um, you handle with multiple inventory units during the purchase and you sell it in a different unit uh, inventory unit and you store it in a different inventory unit. So that's the unit conversion. So uh, these are some of the setup that, that are available here which are actually important uh, worth mentioning. So once you do all this setup then you can just click on the released uh, product uh, button and you release it to a specific legal entity of your choice in this case it's going to be adc motors so click on the next button 
and choose the ADC motor if you want to release it to multiple entities then you can choose multiple entities in this list and say next so let's say you are releasing thousand items together into a specific legal entity and you're going to choose next or finish it's just going to hang until all the thousand and uh, items are released so you will not be able to move to any other screen you may need to wait until all the thousand items are released into a legal entity so to avoid that situation there is a there is a concept of run in batches so which means that when I turn on the run in batches and I have thousand items to be released then the system will still finish it but it won't release right away it will just wait for the batch to run and at the back end while you're working on a different uh, screen it will seamlessly um, release all the items uh, um, so that you will have a better experience and you don't need to stuck in the screen uh, forever okay but in this case it's only going to be one item so it will be released in a couple of seconds so I'm not going to choose run and batch I'm just going to go ahead and click hit on finish so once you're done um, the product will be released into the release product so um, the operation is completed you receive the notification at the top and uh, just close it and close this as well go back to your uh, inventory um, um, uh, information management and we have created a product uh, in this section and the release product was actually originally blank because there was no product in the system but at this moment you will see that there will be one transactions which is a new item and this item can be used in our uh, purchase order and can be purchased into the system but uh, but we have some more setup to be completed before we start using the item because the item is not fully finished it's just released into the legal entry so um, what are the other setup that we need to do in a, a release product is uh, a topic for the next episode so keep watching the series and keep watching my next episode see you again and thanks for watching this episode